into our final wrap up. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. I believe I am on now. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, my presentation, day three of uh, the, my presentation on radiation and radioactivity. Thank you for, for sticking in with us here. Uh, yes, thank you, Alexander. Um, so today I have um, a few things I want to talk about. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna I'm not gonna go over uh, a lot of those basic things that I did on those the first day and a little bit on the day two. We're gonna talk about some interesting subjects, um, some some subjects that I, I really love. Uh, but uh, so there's gonna be two things I'm gonna go over here. And while I'm going over those things, uh, any questions that you might have, please uh, just flood the, the Q&A with it. And as soon as I'm done talking about those two things, uh, I'll go ahead and kind of open it up for some Q&A. Um, so yeah, uh, the subjects I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, let's just go ahead and just get into it. Uh, the first subject I want to talk about Yesterday, I went into a little bit about the health effects of radiation, but today I want to get more into the benefits that we're able to have from your radiation, uh, using radioactivity, and uh, even nuclear power. Uh, some of you might notice I have my uh, atomic power, yes, please, t-shirt on, and those benefits that we get from radiation, radioactivity, uh, th that is the reason why I actually got into this field. Because uh, I uh, have learned over, over this entire time uh, just how many benefits we get from using this technology. And I'm going to go into just a couple of those. So let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen a little bit here. Hopefully I can keep the, the chat going. Um, one moment, you can see a, a bunch of me into <laughs> a bunch of, there we go. Um, so this here, uh, can I get, uh, somebody to go ahead and guess who this individual is in this picture? I'll, I'll, I'll wait for, let's see if I can get any guesses on, on who, who people might think this is. Take a drink of my coffee while I'm waiting. Anybody? I don't have any prizes to give away. Yes, thank you, Amy. First guess, that is Madame Curie. And I can't talk about the benefits of radiation or even the history of radiation without talking about Madame Curie. She um, has, or she was basically the pioneer in my field of health physics and nuclear technology. Um, she, uh, I could talk about her probably for this entire presentation if I wanted to, but uh, just a few highlights about her. She was one of the first people, or she's the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. I want to say she won two Nobel Prizes. Some can correct me that by looking that up on uh, Wikipedia. But uh, she won Nobel Prize uh, for her discovery of uh, radium and polonium. Um, but uh, she also, uh, when it came to pioneering my my field, uh, she she did so much really good work when it came to uh, the medical field and using radiation and radioactivity in the medical field. And one of the things, I don't know how many people know this about her, um, is she used, um, radiation, radioactivity, x-rays for one thing, um, in the medical field. And she actually saved, um, people are, are estimating over a million lives of soldiers during World War I by her use of radiation and radioactivity and x-rays. Um, that, that has to do with uh, using it to do imaging of uh, wounds for shrapnel so they can remove shrapnel and uh, also using things like uh, radium to sterilize 
uh, wounds. So she was able to not only just her herself do those procedures, but set up a lot of uh, different locations where they could do these type of procedures. Other people could do it. So she could teach them how to do it and let them uh, do that. But uh, that that was just a major accomplishment because uh, beforehand, if you had uh, shrapnel in, in, in wounds, it, it was very uh, difficult to know where it was, how deep it was. But with these x-ray images, we were able to just identify exactly where it was and, and get it. So just this one individual alone able to save over a million lives using radioactivity and radiation uh, really goes to show how many lives have been saved since. Uh, we have greatly improved our technology when it comes to this technology. And um, with those improvements come even more saved lives. So you could easily say uh, that hundreds of hundreds of millions of lives, even probably more, it's, it's almost countless. I haven't seen any actual numbers out there because there's just so many lives that have been saved by this technology over uh, the last over a hundred years uh, since we've been using this technology. And uh, what's interesting is some people might know, um, I'm sure I'm probably going to get somebody, oh, no, no questions on it yet. But Madame Curie, uh, when she passed away, uh, a lot of experts think that it's, it's possible that her work with the radioactivity uh, is what caused her ultimate death. And I, I'm, I know that uh, Madame Curie, she didn't think that that was the case, but um, what's great is since her time in uh, using radiation and radioactivity, uh, we have greatly, not only greatly improved the technology for its use, but we've greatly improved our ability to protect people um, from that occupational uh, hazard of dealing with radiation all the time uh, in, in our daily work. And uh, now using that technology is extremely safe and we're able to use, see a lot of benefit from it while at the same time protecting people um, from it, which is again, like I mentioned before, what a health physicist does. And I see Amy uh, mentioned rad poisoning. Uh, it wasn't specifically rad poisoning. It's a, it, or it was a, a uh, certain condition that I, I can't remember the name of it because I'm, I'm not a doctor myself. So I, I forget some of those specific names, but they think that uh, whatever that condition was, was a result of uh, constantly uh, being uh, irradiated. So I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly what the condition was. All right, so that's that's just Madame Curie, and that is just the field of, of, of nuclear technology and health physics and using radiation in the medical field. Not only have we seen uh, health benefits by its use in the medical field, I, I mean, I've mentioned this before, it's been an industrial field as well, but in energy as well. And a lot of my colleagues that are health physicists, they work uh, with nuclear power. And that is another one that we've also seen lives saved. And so back in, uh, what, what year was it? Uh, 2013, James Hansen, uh, I don't know if you all know who he is, but he is probably one of the most famous uh, climate scientists um, out there. He actually stood in front of uh, the, or in front of Congress and basically testified to say that, hey, like climate change is a really big deal. We need to get on top of it now. Uh, this was decades ago that he uh, went in front of Congress and, and spoke to them about this. And he did this study here about nuclear power. Um, James Hansen, he, he, he understands that nuclear power is a very, very critical technology for weaning ourselves off of fossil fuels. And he did a, a really cool calculation here um, on how many lives have been saved by nuclear power. And that would be uh, over 1.8 million people between the time of 1971 and 2009 that were saved by nuclear power. And he's expecting it to go up to 7 million 
uh, lives within the next uh, few decades here, next three more decades, because in, in the study, he said four decades, and it's already been a decade since the study came out. Um, so millions and millions of lives saved by nuclear power by displacing fossil fuels, which the problem with fossil fuels is the particulate emissions that they uh, emit that we breathe in and uh, can cause uh, a lot of issues in, in the lungs that lead to premature death. So nuclear power has been able to displace those fossil fuels and provide that 24-7, 365 uh, day a year power uh, in order to, uh, so that we aren't using these technologies that uh, could cause harm to us. I should mention that uh, any power technology is, is, is uh, better for our health than no power technology at all. But then if we could find other technologies such as nuclear power and other alternative forms of energy such as wind and solar to displace uh, the fossil fuels that can improve everyone's health. So um, that's, the, that's the good next logical step. So that's, this is just another one of those uh, areas where uh, we've seen a lot of benefits by the use of radiation and nuclear technology uh, in order to save lives, um, as well as uh, displace fossil fuels, nuclear power, uh, as well as hydropower has displaced a lot of fossil fuels, uh, or sorry, uh, uh, greenhouse emissions as well. So it's it's also helped when it came, comes to slowing down the effects of climate change. So let me go ahead, I'm sure, oh yes, nuclear is green, absolutely. Um, and again, another reason why this field is something I just love because, um, uh, because I, I've come to understand that, that nuclear power is very green, um, as well as, uh, nuclear technology in general, uh, is super beneficial for our society. Um, any other questions about, uh, that subject, the benefits of it, because I'm going to go ahead and get into uh, the next subject that I'm really excited to talk about. Um, yep, not seeing any questions yet. I'll come back to them if they do come up. Uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Uh, but the next one I want to talk about is I've been showing during this presentation some really cool instrumentation that uh, I've mentioned uh, is, is quite expensive technology. Uh, so this is a... Uh, uh, detector that can detect specific isotopes, but it's about $15,000. So uh, not everybody can afford something like that. So I want to show a really cool, affordable way to be able to detect radiation. And you all could probably do this in the time of my presentation. You could probably start playing around with uh, this and that is by using a using your phone. Just all it, all it takes is your phone, a special app, and a piece of black tape. I, it's hard to tell. I taped up my front facing camera here. That that's all it takes. Those three things: phone, the app, and a piece of black electrical tape. And you can turn your phone into a radiation detector. And I remember when I first discovered this, this blew my mind. Um, but I want to show you all uh, kind of what you could use this type of detector for. And yes, yes, I'm getting a lot of people are like, wow, like, yes, uh, it is pretty cool. So let me show uh, kind of both how this works as well as what is it really good for uh, when it comes to detecting radiation. So I'm going to share my screen here again. Don't mind. It's going to double me. Yep. Um, and we're going to kind of go into, again, a little bit of the basics in order for me to kind of explain how these, uh, how you can turn your phone into a detector. I'm going to go back to the basics that we talked about uh, on Thursday. And that is what exactly is radiation? Um, and this radiation, like I've talked about on the other days, is, is specifically the electromagnetic radiation. So that's the, the waves of radiation, not the particle radiation, um, but the electromagnetic waves. And here's that uh, spectrum again. 
talking about your radio waves, infrared, visible lights, UV, X-rays, and gamma rays. And all of these uh, electromagnetic or types of electromagnetic radiation have what's called photons associated with each one. So a photon, that is one specific packet of radiation. So a radio wave can have one photon um, of radio wave at that specific energy. You could have a visible light, which is just one photon, which is that packet of that light in a very specific uh, energy or wavelength. Um, and that's the same thing for all these different types of radiation, even your gamma rays and your X-rays. Uh, when you have a packet, just a one individual ray, uh, that is called a photon. Um, stick with me here. But uh, so now that you, you know that these are all photons, let's go ahead and go into what uh, your camera on your phone is. And it's, it's a CMOS chip and or a CMOS image sensor. And those work by first kind of filtering out um, some of the, uh, or filtering out the lights, kind of uh, directing it towards these filters that, that uh, each CMOS ch chip has. There's thousands of these little CMOS chips. Uh, we'll filter out the light so only one uh, color of light makes it through and it will interact with these photodiodes. And so if it's a blue light, it'll be filtered out and say, hey, only blue light can hit this specific photodiode. And when it hits it, it says, hey, I just saw a blue light or a green light or a red light. And it's able to transfer that into an electrical signal and your camera is able to process that information and create an image. Now, um, like I mentioned, remember this whole entire time, uh, these light rays coming in are photons and X-rays and gamma rays are also photons. And so here, remember this is the, the photodiodes here. Let me explain kind of what a photodiode is, uh, but it basically um, is, is this thing right here that is connected to, I'm not gonna explain this too much, the P-type, N-type. Um, but just uh, so some of the basics here, it's connected to this circuit with a little bit of a charge onto it. And a normally in a CMOS chip, these photons here are your light photons. They come in, they hit that photodiode, and they cause these electrons here, that's the orange one, uh, to move along this circuit. And then when they move along the circuit, they leave behind these these areas where electrons wanted to be, and those are called electron holes, and those move the opposite direction. But what we're able to do is remember each one of these photodiodes had a filter and it's only allowing one specific color through. So if it's only, let's say, blue photons that are hitting it, every single time it hits it, this one says, hey, I saw this charge hit this photodiode. So that means uh, that blue light was coming through. Now, gamma rays are able to do the same thing. They can go right through those filters without um, being filtered out at all because they have high enough energy and they can hit these electrons and also cause a charge. So not only visible light is able to cause a charge on these photodiodes, but gamma rays and X-rays are able to cause a charge on these photodiodes. So you can actually convince your little CMOS chip on your, your camera phone to, to recognize those uh, gamma rays and x-rays. And I am going to, uh, I showed you on my phone the uh, app here, but I am actually mirroring my phone right now. Uh, and let me, let me make sure before I go on here, I'm probably, I probably have lots of questions, but oh yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm mirroring my phone right now. So this is what my phone looks like. And uh, I'm gonna make it a little bigger for you all, full screen. And um, so this right here is actually the camera. And so if I took off that black tape, you could see just an image of me looking down at my phone. And these little white dots that you see on here are um, where gamma rays or X-rays are hitting 
the 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 lens and these photodiodes are being activated um, by actual ionizing radiation like x-rays and, and gamma rays and uh, it, this right here is able to start counting them and every minute you can see these these red bars here every minute it counts all of those uh, gamma and x-rays that are hitting the detector. And what I wanted to do is kind of show what sort of things can be picked up by this detector and what, what kind of use does this detector have? And th let's go ahead and try a few different things here. Um, I'm going to ask you all to help me out here. And I got my table behind me. I'm pretty sure you all could see it. Um, let me go ahead and make it bigger, but which one of these items do you think is going to show up as being the most radioactive thing on my camera phone? Uh, remember so just as a refresher, I have my Fiesta wear here. I have a, this right here is a radium dial clock. I haven't showed this in the last, uh, two presentations of mine, but it's, a uh, on the dials, it has radium and a phosphorescent material that uh, glows in the dark. Um, I also have uh, a piece of uranium ore underneath the clock here. I have a little tiny check source that we use for our um, instrumentation to make sure that it's calibrated. I have some tritium samples here that um, I'll kind of explain what this tritium, not tritium, sorry, uh, <laughs> trinitite samples here that I'd like to, I'd really like to show you during this presentation, um, very specific to New Mexico. Uh, I have some yellow cake uranium. I have urinal acetate. Uh, again, my Vaseline glass, depression glass, uh, bananas, smoke detector. Which one of these will, will be the most radioactive? on on my detector which ones are going to actually make it go off the most which which one do you think you will i see a someone saying the smoke detector um all of them uranium some good quite or some good uh comments here keep keep doing your comments here i'm going to start doing some of the ones that have been mentioned here so i'm going to do the smoke detector let me go ahead i'm going to as people are commenting, I'm going to set up my detector here to show you all, turn off some of my notifications so they're not interrupting us. Good, I'm getting the good some good ones here. Okay, let me show. go ahead and show my screen, which now I'm having to troubleshoot here because it stopped showing. Disconnect, connect. Perfect. Okay. Let me share my screen once again. I'm not going to make it full screen this time just so I can see your, your all's comments. But here is, it's just starting up right now. Okay. So let me go ahead. I'm going to take the smoke detector and I'm going to bring it up to this. Remember, it was around five counts per minute before before we started here. It's saying two counts per minute right now, but that's because it's still uh, it's still counting up um, for this specific minute. Let me let me wait for a few seconds here. I'm going to wait for it to go around to the next minute, and I'm going to hold up this next to it. Has some uranium, uranium glass, or the radi radium clock. Yep, very good guesses. All right, so we're about count of uh, five counts per minute, and let me go ahead and hold up the clock to, or not the clock, the smoke detector, and see if I can get um, any more than five or six counts per minute. So let me hold it up right next to it, and. You should notice pretty quickly if um, it's actually responding to it. And right now we're at only two counts in the first 15 seconds. Yeah, I'm not getting too much of a response to this. 
So I'm going to just stop after around 30 seconds. And I, I'd say I'm not really detecting much on this. I was able to detect it with my other radiation detector, but the, the radiation that's coming out of this, it's a little too low to be able to be picked up. So let's try something else. I have somebody saying uranium. Grab my clock at the same time. So I'm going to try out the uranium. And looks like we've only had two counts for this entire last minute. So let me wait for it to start over again. All right, it's going to hold up the uranium to it. I'm not going to pull it out of the box just because I usually like to wash my hands after holding it. And look at that first 10 or 10 seconds, no counts at all. There we go. One, two. Let's hold it up to it. Let's keep holding it up. And I have somebody ask here, is americium alpha? And yes, americium is mostly uh, alpha radiation, which alpha radiation would be blocked by just the plastic um, that's covering the detector. And uh, that it also, though, americium has a gamma associated with it. Um, it is a very weak gamma, but it definitely has a gamma. And that's why I was able to detect it with my detector um, on Thursday. So it is both alpha and gamma. So gamma is able to make it through that plastic. So looks like I'm at only five counts for the entire minute that I was holding this up to it. I'm going to hold the now the clock up to it. Let's see if we're able to get much response out of it. So far, we have zero counts. And by the way, I already know which ones are the are, are going to set this off the most. And it looks like uh, we're getting a few counts on this, but uh, four counts. So we might be able to at least get a little above background on, on uh, my radium dial clock, but mm, not much of a response. And my radi the, my, the radium dial clock is actually very radioactive. Let me show with my detector here. I got this detector and you're gonna see it goes off like crazy. That radium is pretty, pretty radioactive, but still, uh, I was get, able to get maybe a little bit above background using my radium dial clock. So let me try another one here. I have somebody saying uh, the uranium glass. I know that, um, I think this one's pretty radioactive. So I, I'm going to do the, um, this one has the marbles in it as well. Um, but I'm going to do the sugar bowl and let's see if the sugar bowl is going to do anything for us. And I'm going to hold it for, let's say about 15, 20 seconds. See if we get much of a response to it, holding it right next to my camera lens and not much of a response here. So let me do some of my own guesses. Um, how about, these are the, the thorium impregnated lantern mantles that I showed you all yesterday. And those are actually pretty radioactive. I like to use these when I'm training our hazmat personnel and other health physicists on uh, when they're doing a uh, scan of somebody to, to determine whether or not there's contamination on them. When we're training for it, I can actually pin these to the inside of jackets and shirts and pant legs. And when they're scanning that individual, it'll set off their detector. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna try that out right next to the detector. And uh, we got a few counts, still not very high. My detector, my actual detector is sitting right next to my phone and it's going off, but phone not responding much to my thorium lantern mantles. Um, I'm going to do two more. Uh, and one I wanted to show was, let me make sure I could see this here, Trinitite, um, which has some um, history, obviously, with New Mexico. And uh, let me read what it says on here. This is one of my favorite parts of my collection. And it says, uh, melted desert sand produced by the de detonation of the first atomic bomb on July 16th, 1945 at the Trinity Test Site, New Mexico. So this, uh, 
is why, or that's why this is my favorite uh, piece um, in my entire collection. And it's only a few grams, um, but uh, it comes from melted glass from a nuclear bomb explosion in New Mexico from the very first uh, nuclear bomb test. And that I think is just really cool. It cont uh, contains some cesium 137 in it still, but it's been quite a while. I'm going to hold it in front of here while I'm talking. Um, it's been quite a while since that uh, test happened. So a lot of that cesium has decayed away and I'm holding it up next to it. I'm going to tell you, it's probably not going to set off my detector as well because uh, it's decayed away so much and the glass is blocking a lot of the uh, beta radiation in it. And Beta radiation is probably what you're going to detect most from it. There is also still gamma radiation that will make it out of the glass, but not enough to even set off my uh, handheld detector here that's very sensitive. So um, this has decayed away too much. Um, Fiestaware, I can already tell you, I've tested it with it, doesn't set it off. I'm going to do one last one here before we open it up for questions. And nobody guessed this one. I don't think they did. Nope. Uh, this is, like I mentioned, it's a check source that we use for our um, to check to make sure that our, our instruments are working properly. And we can take an instrument and we can put it next to it. And we know that this instrument's supposed to read a certain reading. And let me go ahead. I'm already, because I'm holding this close enough to my uh, phone, it's already starting to, here we go. Okay. One, five, nine, 10. So this, this is what's going to be picked up by a detector. Um, look at that amount, right? 31, 35 counts per minute. But this really shows that, yeah, these, these, uh, CMOS chips on your camera phone can be used to detect radiation. And I just think that is the coolest thing um, to be able to have that right in your pocket um, and to be able to understand kind of uh, how that technology is able to do that, uh, detect uh, radiation. And one of the things that is interesting about these CMOS chips um, is very similar technology is used in actual radiation detectors out there. And uh, in the Oh, what is the app called? I'll get to that real quick here. Uh, in the detectors that I use, like this one here, um, there is a what's called a scintillation detector. And it, it uses, uh, it could use a CMOS or a, uh, a different type of um, detector that detects uh, photons, or it can use a photomultiplier tube, which is, I'll, I won't get into that. But uh, what we're able to do is, uh, we take a crystal that is this part right here, and that you can put that crystal uh, right up against one of your, your photodiodes, one of your chips. And when a gamma comes in and it hits that crystal, I'll just show it here. When it hits that crystal, it actually uh, causes a flash of light. And uh, like I mentioned, that light is photons. Um, and that all of those photons from that light that, that flashed in the crystal are then either read by a photomultiplier tube or read by a similar photodiode um, uh, CMOS chip-like thing. So uh, we actually use a uh, very similar technology in our uh, detector, uh, modern detectors these days. So. Um, that, that's just an interesting thing that I thought was pretty cool. Um, so I got the question of what app was that? Um, and that app is called, I don't know, I'm forgetting. Let me see here. I want to say it's radioactivity counter, but let me double check. App info. It is radioactivity counter. And you'll notice when you go to download this on uh, from the App Store, I believe it's also available on, on your uh, iPhone as well. But when you go to download it, you'll notice it only has like a 
less than a four uh um recommendation so it's like 3.6 or something like that but that's mostly because people don't really know how to use it um, or they don't understand the fact that it can't pick up on really low level radiation stuff um i just I, for this last three days, I've mentioned to you that all of these things are very low radiation. And um, that really shows with the fact that your camera uh, using this app can't detect uh, such low levels of radiation. Um, I had to use a special source that you have to, you can actually buy this online if you wanted to, um, for those who are more advanced users. Um, but you have to buy a special source with, with radiation in it to even make it go off. All the rest of these things um, just don't have enough radioactivity in it. All right. So that is two things that I wanted to talk about uh, today. I think I filled up our time pretty good here. Let me go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let's see if we have any questions that have come up. Nothing in the Q and A yet. Please, uh, I will answer any questions you have. Let me. Okay. And let me see. Let me make sure I at, have. Uh, I might have to add. David, you're saying that you were you were lost. Uh, do I need to invite you in to be a uh, to, to be a admin on this again, or, okay. What is the most radioactive thing ever? Uh, that's a good, good question. Um, oh, that's, <laughs> we, we use a lot of things in industry that are, that are quite radioactive. Um, just like we use a lot of things in industry that have a lot of hazard to it, like uh, chlorine and ammonia. We also have a lot, uh, large amounts of that, that can be hazardous. We also have things that are uh, very, very radioactive, um, that we use in research. We use, uh, for, um, I couldn't tell you which one of them is going to be the highest radiation, but one of the really cool things we use that has a lot of radioactivity and radiation to it is, um, blood irradiators. So all of the blood that uh, everyone donates, um, it goes almost all, I would say like 99.9%, some, somewhere around there, almost all of it goes through a blood irradiator. And uh, these blood irradiators have a ton of radioactivity. They're some of the biggest sources we deal with and um, they irradiate blood and kill any pathogens that are in the blood. And it basically it cleans out that blood to make it uh, so where it's uh, good to use in people who need it. Um, and it's, it, it makes the blood way more safe. Uh, there is a very tiny percentage of the blood that's not irradiated uh, for some scientific reason that I couldn't tell you, but uh, almost all of it is irradiated. Um, I have, I'm sorry. I do not know how to add you on to as the, the panelist. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things that is one of the most radioactive things, uh, we have out there and we get again, a lot of benefit from it. I have somebody asking me, what are the balls? Uh, what are these balls here? I'm assuming that these balls, is that what you're talking about, Sam? Um, but this was actually a gift that my kids gave me. Uh, my kids and my wife know that I am a, I am a nerd and, uh, it's just a fun thing that looks kind of like it's an atom. And I'm actually able to kind of explain, uh, how atoms work using it, but it's just kind of almost like a puzzle thing. These things can kind of, you can play around with it. My kids saw it online and they decided to get it for me, but um, I thought it was really cool because it looks like an atom. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna see if I can add you as, oh, there we are. If I go to participants, 
attendees. There we go. Now, oh, it won't let me change the role. I'm sorry. I can only chat with you. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I know we only have a few minutes left here. Um, is there any other questions that you all have when it comes to radiation, radioactivity, um, things that you want to see before I uh, cut us off here? Okay. Yes, thank you. I have loved doing this. And uh, please feel free to reach out to me on either my YouTube channel. Um, let me go ahead and put my email address on here. Uh, 